Hey, want to make something cool with code? Today we're using 3JS to create a rotating sculpture, a floating cloud of shapes glowing with soft shadows and good vibes. It's clean, it's dynamic, and it's easier than it looks. If you're new to 3JS, check out my course, Learn 3JS Basics, now at summer discount pricing. Also, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Exponent. Visit tryexponent.com. Everything you need to ace your tech interviews. Let's go. You can go to my GitHub, link in the description, to download this to get you here. Got your imports, or we set up our scene, our camera, and our renderer, and then we have orbit controls and a basic geometry added in here. I also set up this animation loop. Eventually gonna update this template so then we, all, we no longer call the request animation frame and you instead use this built-in feature of 3JS where we um, set the animation loop and we pass in the name of the function that we're using to animate. Save it, exactly the same thing over here, just a little cleaner over here. To start out, I wanna just give a basic overview of shadows, how to enable them. For example, if you have a directional light, which I'll add right now, const key light, it's a new directional light that's white, set its position 555 five, five, and tell it to cast a shadow. Um, instead of that, I'm just going to scene.add key light. So now we have a key light. Let's uh, boost up the intensity so we can see a little more clearly. Right? In fact, let's turn off this hemistry light. Great. I want it to cast a shadow onto something. How about a plane? Right below where we define our cube, let's uh, const floor is equal to a new plane geometry. 10 by 10. Let's fix this floor geo. Our floor material is a shadow material. This is sort of new to me too. Let's see how it works. And then the floor. And let's scene.add floor. Actually, that's good. We want to rotate it so we can see it. Move it down on the y axis a little bit. Tell it that we do want it to perceive shadows and then add it to the scene. And if I move the camera, I can't see it. Hang on, let's replace this guy here, the shadow material, with a, a material that's useful for debugging, just so we can see our material. There it is. There's our, there's our plane. I don't need this opacity. If we turn off the rotation here, and also move the camera from the get-go, position dot set, zero comma, uh, slightly higher on the y-axis and then on the z-axis as well. Good. Not loving it, let's, let's just move it like that, there. We have to, a couple more steps to go through before we'll see shadows in our scene. We have our light, that's casting a shadow. We need to tell the floor to receive a shadow. We did that. Now the cube has to cast a shadow as well. Cube dot cast shadow is true. <clears throat> okay, still no shadow. Last step. Come up here to the renderer dot shadow map dot enabled equals true. And now we have a shadow. It's a little rough. It's because of the resolution. I think by default, the resolution is 512. Let's just take a look to see if that's true. In the key light that's casting the shadow, that's the one that has the map. Console.log keylight.shadow. And let's look at that in the console map. Here it is. Okay, so it's 512 by 512 by default. Get rid of that console log. Let's make it more detailed, uh, twice as big. I don't know why it's telling me these are defaults. They're not. And depending on the resources you have, if this is a mobile phone, for example, or if it's on a computer that's not as, doesn't have a powerful graphic card, you may want to stop there. I'm going to go uh, four times higher, 4096. And now I have a really nice crisp shadow. Yeah. Um, something to play with to see if you can make it um, 
see key light dot shadow dot radius is equal to 10. I think this will give us a soft shadow and it does. See how it's kind of soft around the edges there? And let's make it 20, twice as much. There's a little bit of artifacting here. I don't love that. I'm not sure what to do about it though, but then we have a nice soft shadow. Um, let's play with the key light dot shadow bias. I think it's bias. Let's let's see what happens if we adjust this. I'm going to tweak it to a very tiny negative value. Oh, it, and you see there's a greater gap here now. I didn't. I actually don't like that. And I'll reduce the gap a little bit. Now that's gone, but it's kind of popping out over here a little bit. Just to see what that looks like at a greater value. Huh. I don't see much difference there. Now, this shadow material, let's see how that looks. Okay, that's great. That's exactly what I wanted. It's just kind of a shadow floating in space. I like it. Check the 3JS docs for more information about this shadow material. It looks, looks to be promising. Pretty cool. Okay. Now that we've given a basic demonstration of how to use shadows, this is really just a skimming the surface. There's much more to it. I want to create something that uses shadows in a kind of artsy way. I'm going to get rid of this floor. I'll keep the key light. Maybe even turn on this hemisphere light. I want to populate uh, the surface of a sphere with a bunch of cubes. Here's how I want to do that. Hmm. Since I'm creating a bunch of the same thing, a bunch of cubes, I'm going to use an instance mesh. So let's start there. Or maybe, maybe I won't start there. Maybe I'll start with the, the actual sphere shape. So const icogeo is equal to a new icosahedron geometry. It's, it's not that small. It's actually kind of bigger. And ICO mat is a mesh standard material. Could just be a mesh Lambert material. Something I'm choosing Lambert because I don't need a lot of um, visual interest and I want an efficient shader. So, excuse me, an efficient material. So, this is why I'm choosing Lambert to say wireframe equals true. Um, by default, it'll be white. A const ICO sphere is a new mesh and scene.add scene.add icosphere and there's our icosphere great if i wanted to make it uh stand out a little bit more turn it to a mesh basic material say that the um tr it's transparent and has an opacity of 0.25. So it's there. I want to position a box at each one of these vertices. I'll use an instance mesh to do that. Let's create that instance mesh. Const um, mesh is equal to a new three instance mesh. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use this geometry because I want that to be multiplied and laid out and that material and there's the number uh, number of instances and then add that to the scene i don't need to add this to the scene anymore this cube here now doesn't change but believe it or not there's a hundred cubes all stacked up right there um you can loop over oh you can loop over the instance mesh to position the instances. Let's do that. We'll need this dummy object to, to work with it. And say for let I, uh, I'm going to call this count. And then we'll define count here. Const count is equal to 100. Yep, make that count. By the way, I'm getting that suggestion because I have get 
Copilot, GitHub Copilot, next edit suggestions enabled. If you're paying for GitHub Copilot like I am, you can use this feature. I'm not sure if it's available in other coding assistants. So in this for loop, I'm going to calculate a random angle. Okay. It's actually, it's actually not random. It's based on the, it's based on the count. And then I'm going to determine a X and a Z position, set it, and then, okay, this should position all the instances and a big circle like that. Interesting. That's not really what I wanted to do. I want it to be in a random position. That's going to be easy to, to do. Just say const x, z, and let's do y as well. Just in a kind of cubic space. Got y in there. And now they're just positioned randomly around the scene like that. Let's put them on the wireframe sphere, though, um, instead of just randomly all over the place. To do that, I'm going to grab the positions of the sphere, which I'll call positions, const positions, uh, positions meaning the location of the vertices in the sphere. There's one issue with this, though. Um, if, you, if you count the number of vertices on the sphere, you'll see there's just 12. There's three and three and then six more around the middle. However, if I console dot log positions we get this buffer attribute you'll see it's it's got 60 not 12 it has to do with the way geometry is built uh, the way the geometry is structured in 3js we don't want 60 vertices we only want 12 to to weed out the ones we don't want i'm just going to dedupe them i need to create a a vector 3 for this purpose, and then an array to hold the unique positions. I'm going to loop over using a for loop, all the positions. This line here says, go into that buffer attribute and pull out the position at this index, i. Here's, this is the line that I love. Uh, I'm going to, it's creating an array called dupes. If that array is empty, then push it in. And let's take a look at our unique array now. And it's 12. It's length is 12. That's exactly what we want. So using that uniques, let's position, let's modify this, this, this guy here. Uh, well, that len. And len is equal to unique.length. We're going to grab the position, which is that item in the unique array at that index i. We're going to set the position. Whoops. Uh, I think it's just copy. And then update matrix. Boom. And that should position them where we want them. Oh my god, I'm missing a couple. How am I missing a couple? I didn't expect that. Um... I can't explain why I'm, why I'm missing these guys. I want to shrink that cube just a little bit. Size, comma, size, comma, size. Const size is equal to 0 0.5. They're a little bit smaller now. Oh boy. What if I increase the complexity of that background sphere? Whoops. Save. Oh, oh! I know why. I'm still using count. That's why. Okay, my bad. Let's get rid of count and let's move this deduping business up so that we can use it when we define our instance mesh. Before I define the instance mesh, I want to get the get unique stuff length yeah boom there we go my bad let's reduce the complexity again down to zero and there's the 12. already pretty interesting i could um rotate each one of these guys uh, i could 
we could do the scale too, but I want to do the rotation. Rotation dot set, and it's going to give me a random value for each x, y, and z. Let's make that a little more readable, like so. And now these guys are randomly rotated. I think that's a lot more interesting looking. Also, let's set the color. Let's create a color object. Color equals a new 3 dot color. Thank you. And let's mesh that. Oh, color is set HSL and set color. What's happening here? Set HSL is going to set a color based on its hue, saturation, lightness. The hue is a random value. Lightness is, or excuse me, saturation is 1 and lightness is 0 0.5. Okay, it looks wrong. It didn't really work. And that's because I'm defining the color up here as, as something else. Okay, the nice thing about using this method for creating this layout is that I can just, in, I can add more boxes just by increasing the complexity of this icosahedron. I'm going to label this so it's more clear. Uh, uh, main icosphere for layout. And if I increase the complexity of this guy, look at that. Oh, this is wrong. This should be mesh dot. Um, let's see how I do that. I don't know. Set color at. That seems to make more sense. Yeah. Kind of fun, but ugly. All right, so we can control this hue a little bit better. Um, we could say I divided by len, for example. And it's kind of rainbowy. Let's do pause.y times 0 0.5, or just scale it down a little bit, times 0 0.05. That's sort of interesting. I'm going to hide the wireframe sphere so we just have the floating boxes now. I also need to zoom out a little bit because I'm because of the scales I'm working with there. Now let's have this guy cast shadows on itself. The instance the instanced mesh needs to cast shadows. So mesh dot cast shadows equals true and mesh dot receive shadows equals true. And now we've got shadows and also some weird kind of shading on the boxes as well. Let's turn off the key, the, excuse me, the hemisphere light so we can see it more clearly. These shadows look fine. These not so much. Let's fix those. Uh, to do that, I want to modify the lights, uh, this bias here and make it a negative value. I think that did it. That positive value for shadow bias was causing that kind of weird shading. If I just turn the bias off altogether and turn the radius off too, we get nice crisp shadows. The reason crisp shadows are interesting is because you could create a really high contrast composition um, with a couple of tweaks. If I boost the color up, excuse me, boost the lightness up to one, so they're all white. And then turn up the key lights intensity so that they're really white. Let's say 10. See how high contrast that is now? I think this is a really cool look. Let's move this mesh around. Um, mesh like so. Oh, that's too fast. Let's reduce it by a factor of five. Okay, that's pretty cool. There's lots more you could do with this. Play with different shading, different materials, different shapes. But this is basically it. This is a, a really simple code art project using shadows. Okay, that's it. Consider sharing this video with someone you think might enjoy it because it really helps my channel grow. And as always, thanks so much for stopping by. I'll see you in the next one.